10 years ago, I was newly married. And my then new husband and I spent night after night study. We were preparing for the GMAT exam, which is the standard exam to apply to any good business school. My husband wanted to climb the corporate ladder and I wanted to escape my really boring desk job that I was stuck in for years. So this was my escape route. Friends were laughing at us. We were not going on a honeymoon. We were studying day in and day out. And a few days later, I found out I was pregnant. It was difficult. I was mad at my husband, but I kept studying. And finally, we both got decent GMAT scores. Um, now, the score is valid for five years. I can apply anytime within five years. So I put that aside and I decided to focus on the pregnancy. And that took my mind off from this horrible place that I was working at. And the next year, my baby boy was born and he changed my life. It was beautiful. Now, when my son was a few months old, my husband started applying to different business schools and took him many attempts, but he finally got into a good business school. And when he did, he turned to me and he said, you know, you should just attempt an interview. It's not easy and you would get an experience. And I said, yeah, that's harmless. Just attempt or apply for an interview. So I applied to a business school, get shortlisted for an interview, go there, uh, get interviewed, and then I forget about it. I'm in, I'm in India at the time. I'm in South India. My husband gets into business school. He flies to Delhi and he's gone. And a few weeks later, later I get a mail in the post. It's from the same business school that I applied to. And it says, congratulations. I made it into one of the best schools in India. They have just a handful of girls and I made it. And I was trembling because I didn't want to go. It took me many years to get that offer. But right now, I'm no longer an ambitious woman. I'm just a mom. My mother-in-law, who's a retired school teacher, was super excited. She's like, oh my God, you both get to do your MBA the same year. It's a one-year program. So go, do it. I'll take care of the baby. I'm not so sure. Now, in India, generally when the mother-in-law says so, you do so. So I kept mom. My husband calls me and says, go. My mom will take care of the baby. My mom said the same thing. I didn't have the confidence to say, I'll do it again next year. I really didn't have the confidence I could repeat this. So finally, I packed my bags. My school's in the north of India and I'll be away for a year. I won't see him. No video calls back in the day. Pack my bags, get into the car. I wave goodbye to my little baby who is in my mother-in-law's arms. And as the car turns out the driveway, I look at him as he turns into a little speck in the distance. I board the plane to Delhi, and as I look out the window, tears start rolling down my eyes. Will my son remember me? Tonight, will he cry for me? Will he forgive me? Why didn't I speak up? I could have stayed back home. You see, I hadn't met a single woman who had left their child behind to pursue their dreams. Not at home not amongst my friends, not in the media. As far as I was concerned, I was stepping into the unknown and that scared me. And as I sat there lost in these thoughts, my co-passenger started chatting. She's a middle-aged woman with glasses, super smiling, chatting, and she wants to know where I'm going. So I tell her and she says, wow, both of you are doing your MBA, that's amazing. Have you thought of having a baby? Typical Indian question. Now, I don't mind her being inquisitive. I'm just scared of being judged by an older woman. So I bite my lip and I turn to her and I say, I have a little boy and he's home with my mother-in-law. And as I brace myself for a judgmental remark, she says, oh my God, that's tough. I know, because I had to do the same thing 30 years ago. Now, what are the odds that you'll get the perfect message from a total stranger 30,000 feet in the air? I was dumbstruck. I never told her how I was feeling, yet she spoke my mind. 
And she encouraged me and told me that whatever I was doing would help me in my future. When the plane landed in Delhi, she gave me her business card. Her name is Satya, which means the truth in Sanskrit. And she's the managing director of India's largest power plant. Coincidence, pure luck, I don't know. But that day, as I left the airport, I was smiling because I saw Satya's past meet my present. Thank you.